Hello. Um, we're going to talk today. Um, we're continuing to talk about listeners and events, uh, but instead of just mouse events or mouse mouse motion events, we're going to talk about uh, timers, key events, and uh, not really state machines, but timers and key events. And so uh, timers. Uh, the big difference is for timers, they don't. There's no timer event. What they do is they generate an action event, and so we would need to implement the action listener interface. Uh, the action listener interface only requires one method, and that is the action performed method. Okay. Um, now, normally we had to do the registration for um, our mouse event or uh, our mouse motion listener um, in a, an explicit step. But for a timer, since there is no point in having a timer without a listener, right? A timer is going to generate events just like on a you know kind of a regular interval, like tick, tick, tick. There's no point in having that timer just tick, tick for no reason. So when we have our constructor, we specify right here who is the listener, right? The listener's gonna listen to those action events. Uh, additionally, timer, we need to start it. Uh, and once I click, uh, once I call timer.start, then it will start generating those action events. Bam, 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 bam. And then if we call stop, it'll stop generating those events, okay? One of the main things we can do, and you're going to do this in your second semester project, most likely, is generate animation um, using the action uh, events that a timer produces. And so what you could do is you specify, okay, every 4,000 milliseconds, so every four seconds, I'm going to fire off an action event. Um, now, uh, what you could do, even and the most simple, is just to call repaint. Right? In other words, all your other methods are kind of uh, figuring out what the new state is going to be for that new frame of animation. And every tick of the timer, I'm just repainting that. Bam, repaint. Bam, repaint. Bam, repaint. Because if you don't, right, it's not going to show up to the user. Now, this may look a little bit weird to you. Again, this is the something called a uh, anonymous inner class. And so this is where instead of saying, you know, action listener, blah, 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 equals new action, uh, you know, um, or sorry, um, you know, something, something listener equals listener and you define a, an action uh, perform method inside a class, you don't actually have to name a class, you don't have to actually even name what this guy's called, you just say, here's a new action listener and this is what it does, I don't give it a name, that's why it's called anonymous, and um, you often see these because um, it lets you do things a little bit shorter in a manner. Okay, so that's a timer, and we'll see an example of that. The second focus for today is keyboards and focus events. And so um, we need the idea of a focus because if you think about it, there's lots of different things potentially in our GUI. There's like this J frame and that J window and this J button over here. So where is my keyboard input as I'm typing going to go to? So oftentimes if you're not receiving the keyboard input, you need to check to make sure that your focus is in the right place. And the way to do that is to call it request focus in window. Okay, uh, we'll do an example of that as well. Um, let's see, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah, a key thing is JPanel objects do not receive the focus automatically. So if you, again, if you are typing keys and it's not getting those key events, um, check to make sure that you are calling request focusing window properly. You can even have it so that when the user clicks, the mouse pressed should request focus in window so that, okay, now I know that that JPanel should receive that input. <clears throat> All right, so key events. Um, Keyboards are uh, keyboard uh, clicks generate key events, so we need key listeners. And uh, the key listener interface requires you to have these three methods key pressed, key released, and key typed. Now, what is the difference? Uh, a press is um, just as soon as you push down any single key, a release is when you release. We're not going to do release so much, but typed is when you. Um, like actually create a character, right? For example, Shift A does a capital A. That's just one type, but that's two presses, right? You press Shift and you press A. So a key press is every push of the button. Typed is a character being typed. Uh, don't forget, we have to register it as well. Okay, so you can read about that as well. Um, you don't have to memorize this. It's not that important, but um, how do I figure out what key is being pressed? Um, every key has an integer code, and so the um, um, the parameter EVT or E is going to contain that code, and you can just use an integer int to store the key code. So you say E dot get key code, and uh, there's also some constants we can use. For example, um, key event. It's a so it's a static 
dot vk underscore shift or vk underscore left, vk underscore right. vk stands for virtual keyboard. Uh, you don't need to know that, but um, you'll see an example. <clears throat> Finally, focus events. If you gain focus or lose focus and you want to do something with those, like um, change the look, you can implement the focus listener interface. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at an example of timers and key events and focus events. Here is the short version again. Um, the main thing, <clears throat> whoops, timers are going to generate action events, key presses generate key events, and let me see if I can even get this here. Uh, focus gained or lost generates focus events. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I should have provided uh, four files to you for today. So rectangle, uh, and then we're going to call this instead of drawing panel, rectangle panel. And we have a rectangle panel listener and a rectangle panel main. So please note that we are doing this style where the listener is not in the same class as the panel. It's not the panel itself. It's not nested in the panel. It's separate. So <clears throat> we're going to have to employ a few of our strategies that we mentioned, but this is a better style uh, overall, as I said. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our goal is to make um, something that looks like this, where I can click, and a timer is going to automatically move um, all these figures to the left with each tick of the timer. Now I can still drag them if I want. I can um, do Command or Meta, click, and get a blue one. Uh, if I click X on my keyboard, it deletes everything. And also, if I click to the right, I move them to the right, so kind of it's like they're swimming downstream. I can cause them to, if I push to the right, go against the current. Okay, so that is our goal for this little uh, demo example. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the rectangle class uh, itself does not need to be modified. Let's take a look at the rectangle panel. <clears throat> All right, so first off, let's just do. Um, with each paint component, remember this is called with every single time I'm uh, repainting. So every time you resize or anything, anytime you call it repaint, um, you're going to draw this, right? You're going to draw, again, we're drawing all the rectangles in our data structure. Uh, just for a hint, let's add a g.draw string. And we'll just give hints like press x to delete, uh, press right arrow to move rectangles to the right. And then you say, you can specify uh, where you want those coordinates. I'm just going to write a 10, 10. All right, so I think we're good with rectangle panel for now. <clears throat> what we can do, though, let's, let's go and take a look at the listener. That's more interesting. OK, so what we need to do then for mouse, uh, for rectangle panel listener, in addition to implementing mouse listener, mouse motion listener, please add the following. It's going to implement key listener and action listener. Okay, so remember action listener is for our timer. Now a listener, as it's a separate class, again, our strategy is we need a reference to the panel it's listening on. Then uh, in our constructor, so we say that, okay, you have to pass in the panel so I can register it. So I, I save that reference, and then I, I add a mouse motion listener. I add uh, a mouse listener. Uh, let's go ahead and add the listeners for the other ones as well. So I'm just going to say rect panel dot add key listener. All right, this, and you can look. There is no add action listener. Right. Remember, um, a timer generates action events. But because a timer has to have some kind of listener, right? It makes no sense for a timer just to go tick, 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 and generate events, and no one's listening. The um, timer, uh, in the constructor of the timer, you specify who is going to listen. Okay, so we can just say something like this: timer, uh, my timer equals new timer, and then you specify how often is this going to tick. So a thousand milliseconds is one second. So we'll just do that every second. It's going to fire off. Bam! Action event. Bam! Action event. Bam! Action event. And then I specify who is listening, and I'm saying this, right? So this is the registration right here. Okay, it's a little bit different. So just remember that for timers. Okay. Um, now if we come down, mouse clicked. So if it's meta is down, it's blue. Otherwise it's red. 
We change our data structure. Remember, no drawing in here. We're just doing this, and then we're repainting it so that we actually see that. <coughs> mouse entered, mouse exited, um, mouse pressed. So that gives us the, uh, we click, and it allows us to drag, mouse released. So all these are just uh, things that should be done, hopefully, already. Mouse dragged. Uh, but now I want to get into the, uh, the newer stuff. All right, so action performed is called with every timer tick. What do we don't want to do with every timer tick? Well, we want to shift all the rectangles to the left. Okay, so how do I do that? Hmm. Well, again, since I am not actually in the rectangle panel class, I need to return to this guy and I need to say, all right, so here's all my rectangles this, in this data structure here. I want the sh them to shift to the left. Um, so I need to open up some kind of public interface for this guy to be able to do that. So we can call it whatever we want, but I'm gonna call mine public, excuse me, <clears throat> public void shift all left, okay? So I'm gonna go through my data structure and I'm just gonna shift everything to the left. So I could just do four int i equals zero. i is less than number of rectangles, i plus plus. And what I wanna do, <clears throat> have access to my data structure. So for each one of these, um, I'm going to, so each rectangle, remember, has the ability, each rectangle keeps track of their x and y. And so since I have getters and setters, right, I have setters, I can just set that x. And the next time I repaint it, it'll be moved over to the left. So I'm gonna set the x to b. And again, I have to get the x because I'm not actually inside the rectangle class. So rectangles. All right, dot, oops, dot get x. And since I'm moving to the left, the x should be smaller. So not, let me just move it by 10. So get the old x, subtract from 10 from that, and set that as the new x. I'm going through all the rectangles and doing that, okay? So this is gonna change the underlying data structure, okay? So I'm opening up that interface. So now all I have to do, since I have a reference to the panel that I'm listening on, with every tick of the timer, rect panel, I'm going to call um, set shift all left. Shift all left. <clears throat> all right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's run this. So if I click, nothing is happening. All right, so there's two problems here. Um, let me see if I can debug. So, first thing, when you have problems like this, again, I would insert system.out statements. Make sure uh, this is getting called. Action event fire. Okay, let me, again, call this and show you my console. And nothing is happening. So again, normally we think to ourselves, if this is not being called, that I did not register it. I did not register it, except, remember, I did register it. I did register it for timer. There's one more thing that people often forget. Let's see if you can remember, my timer dot start. If you don't do that, of course, it's not gonna work. So now, there we go. So now it's firing every second, so we're good on that. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see if it actually did anything, though. Let's see, so if I click it, is it moving to the left? No, it's still not moving to the left. So we have one other issue here. Um, so it's being fired and called. I'm shifting them all to the left. Can you spot what's wrong with this? I altered the data structure, but remember, I am not actually altering the, uh, the look of this, right? I'm not actually, no one can actually see those changes unless I call repaint, right? Repaint says, hey system, please, next time you get a chance, do this paint component, right? And then it's gonna go through and draw all these guys at the new coordinates. All right, so if I do that, now if I click, yep, there we go. So not only is it updating the data of the new X's, but it is actually updating it every second so I can see it, it's repainting every second. Okay, cool. So we got that. Now what we want to do is add the ability to shift to the right with every click. Okay, so let's go here and um, 
we want to shift everything to the right, so we know we're going to have to open up another uh, public interface, another way for things to shift. Let's just call it shift all right, and we'll just make it a plus. Okay, so everything else is the same, just shifting it to the right. In our listener class now, again, released is when it's released. The difference of this guy is every press of the key versus every character type. This could be more than one press, like shift A, um, alt, whatever. Um, so there's a difference there. So we need to do two things. So if they type um, an X or a capital X, we want to remove everything. We want to delete all the rectangles. So, um, and if they press to the right, you want to shift everything to the right. So if you want, pause the video, see if you can implement that, where they, if they type an X, you delete everything, and if they push to the right, that would be, that would shift everything to the right. Okay, go ahead and pause the video, see if you can get that to work. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky, so if you didn't get it, that's okay. Key events. Um, contain an event called get key char. So this will tell you, this will tell you the character. This will tell you the character typed, right? Because this is a typed character. Let me have capitalized. That's what we want, right? So this one, we want to use get key code, right? Because every button on the keyboard has its own specific code. So this tells you the code of the key typed, right? Each individual type uh, here. So this will be a char, right? Because this could be like a capital A or capital uh, B or lowercase a, and this will be an int. So it's a little bit confusing. So if you didn't get that, I understand, but please keep that uh, in mind. Um, so I've got the key. So this will be a char, so I could just say something like if key, and again, chars behave a lot like ints. We don't say dot equals. We use the equals equals sign. If it's a capital X, or if it's a lowercase x, we want to, hmm. well, actually, I don't have a way to do that. How would I delete everything? Again, I need to open up a way for me to do that. So let me just call something that doesn't exist yet. Delete all. Okay, so let's write the delete all method. Public void delete all. Well, let's think about that. What would I need to do? I've got this array full of rectangles. I could go through each one and set it back to null. But remember, um, rectangles itself, arrays are objects. So it's just a pointer. So all I have to do is instead of doing that, I can just point it to a new rectangle array. The other, the old array filled with stuff will get garbage collected and it's like we're brand new. Now, hopefully you're realizing I do one more thing to update my state properly to reset it and that is to reset num rectangles to zero. Okay, once I've done that, that uh, gives me a fresh slate. So delete all, I provided that. So let me go ahead and We'll call that, okay, we're good, then it, it exists. All right, so if I do this, I click, I click, I call X. Oh yeah, it still doesn't do anything because again, I have modified the state. Did you catch it? Hopefully you were saying, hey, you forgot. I need to update it, right, repaint. It says, hey, actually make that show up on the screen. So now let me try that again, click, 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 push X. And, and nothing happened. So uh, this is a good chance to debug again. So we think to ourselves, okay, this is registered, right? For, always check to first make sure that you register it. And we did. It's up here. We added the key listener. So that's one thing. Second wave, uh, let's do a system.out. Let's make sure it actually got here. So typed. Okay, let me try that again. Let me show the console. Push X. Okay, so I'm clicking X, nothing is happening. So it's not getting here. Let's think to ourselves, I registered it. This is one, again, that people are gonna forget and you might have forgotten it as well. The idea is 
when I type the key, who is getting the input? Is it the J frame, the J panel, the button panel? Um, the, the only way to do that is to call request focus in window. And so that's easy to forget, but let's just do it now. In the main method, in the main method, the very last thing we do, if you do it earlier, the J frame might steal it. So do it at the end. At the end, have the J panel request focus. Uh, we found last year that sometimes you put it up here, this J frame here will steal the focus if you do all this stuff. Um, so let's say uh, rect panel dot request focus in window. All right, let's see if that worked. Oh, yep, I'm just pushing X and we can see it was typed. So if I try it again, click, 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 push X, gone. Okay, great, so that worked. We're now down to our last thing here, which is every press. Again, typed, we wanna do typed here because we want to capital X's or lowercase X's and capital X's are two characters. Uh, and again, that's a char, get key char. This is a code, it's an int, so that's a little bit of a weird difference, but just keep that in mind. So all I do for this one, it's an int, so I just check if uh, code equals, and again, um, you don't have to memorize you know, what is what, you just use these static ones, key event dot VK, again, it's a virtual keyboard, you can see how um, VK, you can just scroll down and see, you know, like, got a bunch of them here. All the different things uh, that might be on the keyboard here, uh, but we're going to do VK uh, right. Okay, so if I click to the right, I want to call my method that I wrote, which is rect panel dot shift all right. Okay, and again, that just changes the underlying data structure. We need to actually update it. So let's call repaint so we can see it, and let's try that out. So I'll click, click, click. Click, click to the right, yep, there we go. And I can click X to delete, I can drag, and every time I click is moving it to the left. So that demoed all of the things for today. We have a timer firing. Again, that is a slightly different uh, registration. We have keyboard listeners registered. Don't forget to start the timer. Don't forget to uh, repaint after you're done with these guys. And a big one, don't forget to request focus in the window for the J panel. All right.